Hello, another impromptu video. I know I look like crap. I woke up at like 6.30, 5, 6.30, and I haven't really done much. Except, um, look on the website, rate my professor, talk, my, talk to my brother, my aunt, wake up my mom. And, uh, yeah, and then I started thinking about things, and my last therapy appointment, my therapist asked me a question, and it made me want to talk about it. And the question is, what bothers me the most? And it's not what bothers me in general, like pet peeves or anything, it's more... What bothers me when it comes to my borderline? So, I wrote out a little, I did a mind map actually of what everything that bothers me, the things that I thought about and whatnot. And so the main things is, I question, how do people respond? Usually when people find out I have borderline or personality and disorder in general. I'm either judged automatically and they tr start treating me very distantly. Or they treat me like I am the biggest and rudest person in the universe. Or I'm somebody who's too difficult to deal with. They assume things about me that I am unstable, that I'm manipulative, controlling, and I'm, I do these things on purpose, that I choose to be this way, when I don't. Trust me, I hate the fact that I am this way. I really hate it. And then, being blamed even after saying sorry, even after owning up to my mistakes, I am to constantly be blamed. Even if it's low-key blaming, it's just... It's snide, in my opinion. Or people ghost me. And they completely just stop talking to me. And they basically treat me like I don't exist. And they'll ignore my phone calls, they'll ignore my messages, they'll ignore me entirely like I don't exist. Which is not uncommon. It's actually the story of my life. That's why I don't have very many friends. Um, I'm very analytical. And people think I'm not. I, yes, I can be emotional when I'm upset and dis emotionally dysregulated, but people with borderline are. We have a tendency, and I'm not talking on a professional standpoint. I'm not a professional on any of this. I'm just talking about from my own experiences on all of this. And what I've learned in therapy, from dialectical behavior therapy and from pri private therapy, is that we have a tendency to either go into an extremely emotional mind or um, uh, like a very it, wise mind is the middle, but the, um, the in intellect, intellectual, intell I can't think of the other side, um, but wise mind is the middle, but the other side is where we basically think of everything without emotion, and the other side is emotion mind. And when I'm emotional, it's there, it's in your face, and I have a difficult time controlling my impulsions. My compulsions. Not just impulsions, but my compulsions. People don't understand that when I feel things emotionally, it's not, I don't do things 
to manipulate. I'm not self-harming to manipulate you into doing something. I'm not doing it for attention. When I'm talking about my own experience, when I do it, it's because I'm feeling so much emotional pain that physical pain makes the only sense to me. It's the only thing that can distract me from that emotional pain and it's the only thing that I'd rather feel. I have hit myself, I have cut myself, I have done things to myself to feel that in physical pain just to escape the emotional pain. And one thing that causes severe emotional pain is being invalidated of your emotions and your thoughts and your feelings and when you understand that when somebody has borderline they grew up invalidated and they were invalidated not just like <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about no they were invalidated because when they said told somebody about being traumatized or when they were emotionally dysregulated they weren't taught the healthy ways of handling these things they were invalidated we were never taught the healthy ways of handling relationships and it's not sometimes it, it's not the fault of the parents because they were never taught you learn what your family learns because they learn what their family learns it's an endless cycle and you can't break that cycle until somebody teaches that person that cycle how to break that, until somebody teaches that person how to break that cycle I learn I'm learning how to break that cycle through therapy now to validate a person no matter how crazy or stupid it is when a person is emotionally dysregulated screaming bitching yelling sorry for the language when they sound so ridiculous you have to sit there and say I understand I see your perspective you are valid in your feelings I can see why it makes you so upset you have to have a stable mind you have to be emotionally stable and calm and validate their feelings calm them down and then help them to check facts and if you have to put those facts in front of their face do it because at that time their reality is so warped they don't know what real is again talking from my own perspective there's so much stigma around this and people are shamed because of it you have no people don't have any idea how much shame I feel and the silver lining when you shame a person and then you say at least you can do this or at least that or well you know that can happen you're silver lining it and you're shaming that person believe it or not that person feels more shame when you do that than you realize <laughs> I that's how I feel I don't know about anybody else but that's how I feel but what I want people to know is I'm not crazy I'm learning I may have difficulty with controlling myself yes I have compulsions I have impulsions but please have some compassion and understanding to help me understand this reality I have not been in this reality for over 20 years nobody realizes that I haven't lived in this reality since I was 10 years old I was living in a fantasy world since then and people don't realize that so I'm not kidding I wasn't living in this world there are parts of my past that are completely blank because of it and there is a difference between empathy and sympathy seriously 
when you sympathize with a person, you're pitying them. You're basically saying, I feel sorry for you. You're lo it makes a person feel like you're looking down on them. Like you're better than them. And that's how I feel when somebody does that to me. When they empathize, it means that they're willing to sit in the dark with you and say, I am willing to sit here with you and help you through it. I will help you find them those resources and I will help you with them. Ask me questions. Help me to understand. If I ask a question, answer. And don't assume I'm asking out of idiocy. I'm asking because I seriously don't know these answers. I And I'm constantly shamed because I ask these questions and I don't understand these things and people think because I am 33 years old, almost 34, I should know these things, but they don't realize the intensity of disassociation of reality. People don't realize I have blank parts of my past because I disassociate when I am emotionally stressed. When I exploded on my husband and kicked him out, I don't remember that 24 hours. I don't, I don't even remember if I ate that day. And that's not like me. I usually journal every night so I can remember the next day. That's how important journaling is to me. I may not know the mechanics of writing, or the etiquette, or the proper rules or anything, but this is what I do. I never learned them because I disassociated from reality, and I never learned them because I never acknowledged them in reality. I was living in my own world. I want people to ask these questions of me and not make assumptions. I don't understand what it means to be in this reality. I've only been in it really for the past few years and I'm still struggling to be in it. Angel, Daisy. I want to learn these things. I have never really had a job until work study. Until, I mean, seriously. I, Daisy, stop, stop. I, 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 do you re I don't think people realize because of my mental health I've never held down a job really work study was my job I did volunteer work at Project Beauty Share I had stopped going there because we had such a bad infestation of bed bugs that we had to get rid of all of our furniture we had I have no bed in the house I sleep in a chair my mom sleeps on a couch and my chair. My mom's actually trying to figure out how to get me a new chair because it's broken. I, and we don't have the things because we lost everything. I don't have clothes because we had to get rid of them because that's how bad the infestation was. And the infestation lasted six months. I chose online classes so I wouldn't pass these bugs to anybody. And people don't realize that. I was isolated from my family because of these bugs. It took us six months to get rid of them. I wasn't isolated more than half of this time because of COVID. It was a stupid bug. I don't like being the way I am half the time. And I don't enjoy that I screwed up train. And I don't enjoy that shame I feel people give me when they give me that glare of, you screwed up, now deal with it. Because they do. Or th those comments of, are you really going to do it? Or, I, I, I see you're doing it, but, um, hmm. And the questions on if 
I can actually follow through with things. I think I'm going to probably make another post, a video, about self-sabotage, because that is one thing that people need to know about Borderline, and it's a massive thing that's happened in my life that's affected me more than people know. And especially those in the professional and school environment, people don't understand what it means to self-sabotage. I'm not afraid to own up to my mistakes. Just tell me to my face when I screw up. Anyways, um... Thank you for listening, if you have.